Well, Mrs. K expressed a wish to put poppies into here for this season. So as I've got so many wayward poppies growing in my beds, I thought I'd just stick these in for her. She started the job. So why not just add a few more? And these poppies I've tried to take out in a clump and I'll give them a good water and they should be fine. They're certainly uh, coming on well and there's some fairly sizable ones in here. So I'm just gonna make the most of the moment. And doing those beds only took me a few minutes. I'll show you in a moment, but because the no dig soil is so friable, everything just comes out really easy. And it's a fallacy to think that no dig beds don't get weeds, because they do. But they're always very much more manageable than harder ground, in my opinion, and therefore make the whole process a little bit easier and a little bit more pleasurable. Not that weeding is particularly pleasurable, but it's a necessity of gardening, that's for sure. There's still a lot of cooch grass to get out of this bed and we're not going to tackle it until next season, but we just thought we'd spruce it up a bit whilst we've got the chance. So uh, put these rather bigger ones in here. And there's plenty more of that clavers, as people inform me that it was called, or sticky weed, the stuff that I call goose grass. It's lovely how local areas have different names for different weeds. It's a bit like birds. It's exactly the same. Right, I'll get on and finish this and I'll show you the beds in a moment. Right, there we go. So I've just got to put the nets back up on this. But yeah, it's cleared out really, really simply. And it was just a couple of trugs of those clavers, or cleavers, these things that get sticky. And that seemed to be the prevalent weed. And as somebody pointed out, weeds like flowers. They germinate at different speeds and I may well get another weed come through in due course, but when I get to the next stage on these beds, it'll be planting out. It just gives me a chance to do a final weed before I get the plants in. Wow, look at that pear. Absolutely beautiful. And I'm pretty confident that it's being pollinated. I have seen bees on it, which is great news. And the rhubarb is greened up loads of these flowers on which I've got to take off because they just detract from growing the stalks and stems that we eat. But over the last week, the fruit garden has transformed. Flowers and fruits forming on the berries. The sweet williams have bushed out. Garlic's doing well. And under these nets, the gooseberries are covered in flowers and I can't see any sign of leaves being eaten with these nets on which is fantastic. Somebody asked me what I would do about the pollination of the flowers and most gooseberries are self-pollinating so well we'll see I'm hopeful that that'll all work out and the raspberries I think they're later than they should be because of all the movement. You can see here these that have been left in the ground are well leafed up and forming some flowers. Whereas mine that I moved are just forming the leaves and they're bursting out, although there are flowers on all of them. I think this is either gonna be a year where it's not great because of all the movement or it just be a bit later. I don't mind which. The main thing is that they're in place and doing well. And the apple trees are starting to flower and these plums this is the new plum 
It's exactly the same as that one, but you can see an established tree that's not moved around does that much better. So looking good. Right, back in the polytunnel, I think. Well, I think I'm gonna call this episode Three Houses and Changing Rooms. And I've got good reason for that. I've managed to grow three house tomatoes indoors because the ones I had out here, well, the tray is absolutely barren. So I just don't think they're gonna come. I will hold on just in case, but time's ticking on and tomato seedlings now, they need to be up really. It's good to see these with multiple leaves on and I will transplant those probably today or tomorrow and there's a few more like that. So tomatoes, I'm pretty happy with if I'm honest, but it's approaching that time when I've got to change this room because, well, the strawberries, this is the pot that wintered over. It's covered in flowers and it's looking extremely healthy. And the others, by comparison, they're doing well, not as well as that one, which is really interesting because I have a real ambition to just winter over strawberries in their original baskets. And that one's proving to be a great success. So that's really hopeful. But these tomatoes, uh, not tomatoes, these strawberries, I want to hang now because I want to clear this space. I'm not ready to set my tomato layout yet. I'm going to put my tomato pots in the corner, give me a big open space. And that will enable me to move things that are becoming quite established over here whilst I sow my next tranche of seeds, which is really all the hot weather sweet, uh, seeds, things like pumpkins and squash. And I've got a few more bits and bobs, things that have not been quite as successful as I wanted. Uh, let's see, what have we got as an example? I thought I was gonna say cabbage, but to be honest, they've grown up all right and I don't need too many. Uh, lettuce has been okay, but a few things to sew on. So this needs tidying. I'm gonna take everything out of here now and put it over in that corner, which is another tomato growing corner and start to prepare my carrot bed and get my carrots sown. And of course, I've got parsnips still to sow. So a bit of a changing rooms addition. And I think I'll get on with that now. I did want to show you an onion. So when you think that we're not far off sowing or planting out the onions now, this is an onion from last year and I've still got six of these. And this is Globo stored from last season all the way through the winter and it's absolutely perfect. I can't recommend Globo enough. A fantastic onion. Right, I'll speed this up because it could take me a while. We go changing rooms phase one this polytunnel goes through so many phases over these next few weeks but just to give you an overview we've got the strawberries up that's looking good they look really healthy i'm delighted with those that should give us a nice crop of strawberries the carrot bed is cleared and what i've done is put all the flowers into that area and I can water them easily and just keep them from any cool weather. All of those were given to me by a neighbour. Admittedly they were in sort of the ends of seed trays and I had to pop them on but how generous is that? Fantastic. 
I think we've got Rebecca, Cosmos, and a uh, different variety of Cosmos, I think. And we've got some poppies. And this area, this is at the moment for more established plants that I don't have to worry too much about. Fantastic show of Swede. This is Helena. And I'm really delighted with that. I really needed more Swede for this season and that's going to do me just fine. And the beetroot looking good. Plenty of plants in there. Sweet peas, of course. Some onions over here and some more of those seedlings which probably go outside. This is a job I've got to do. Set these trays up, these deep root trainers for my runner beans. I've got a lot of those to assemble. do not take very long, but that's a job on the horizon. I've still got my remaining pots and cloches over there. Compost and my tomato pots waiting for the tomatoes to move on a bit. Uh, underneath we've got onions that are just growing on. They're doing fine and won't be too long before they go out. We've got some begonias there, which are Mrs. K's. And this is the lettuce that I sowed into boxes a week or so back. That's come on nicely. And the basil that I did the same a week or so back. And again, there'll be three nice pots of basil. A few more onions, leeks in the corner, some rosemary and some mint. And then up on the top bench, this is where I'm going to sow more and add it to the capillary mats. So I've got a few potting on jobs here. Um, all my tomatoes are ready now for potting on, so that's a job that I'll be doing very shortly. Celeriac and some cabbage, some lettuce to pot on. These are just not happening at the moment. We've got a few money maker coming up, which is good because I'm growing those for someone else. And we've got some cabbage to pot on, that's greyhound. And over here, I'll keep these on this capillary matting because they're at great risk of drying out. But all the tagities are doing well. Take a few of these weeds that I've got out. Um, you can always tell the stinging nettles. They've got a typically stinging nettle shaped leaf. So we'll remove those. And this is the lobelia tray. And that's doing well. And there'll be, well, thousands of lobelia, so that's great. This one, not so much, but they are starting to come through now. So I think I've got enough lobelia. Once you push out all those little cells, we'll have loads and loads to come on. But the main thing up here is I've got my bench clear for sowing of the next most important things, which will be all the hot crops, the uh, squash, pumpkin, and various bits and bobs. I've got them prepped here and I still need to do my parsnips. I think I've probably got enough toilet rolls to do that now. And then as I've potted these on, so they'll go down below in these trays and that'll give me my next tranche of sowing. And once I've done that, the polytunnel starts to fill rapidly and I'll have to think about space, get my tomatoes in and what I do with things that have grown on well, but not quite ready to go out and usually that's the cold frame. Well, that's me done for today. I've got these nets to put back up and then I think I'm going in for lunch. I do hope you've enjoyed today's video and if you did, then why not like and subscribe? And if you want to get my updates every Wednesday and every Sunday at 8 p.m. Well, with the backdrop with the pear tree behind me, I wish you good times.